Welcome to this installment of Gallery on Main by the Books. Today's featured monthly artisan artist is Oviora Embry, and uh, the library is so thrilled and honored to have him. So let's give him a big welcome. <laughs> I just want to start saying that my name, Obiora, those who don't know, means good book, the family and friends. It's an Igbo name, or Igbo, um, depends on the, um, I guess, the source to look at, though. And then it comes from Nigeria. And also, too, the name itself also is part of the people slash culture of Nigeria, too. Uh, it's one of the main um, ethnic groups of Nigeria, the Igbo people. Um, and I had, uh, along with my other siblings, a name ceremony um, after we were born. And my parents, my other siblings, said, my um, brother and I, I'm a twin brother, um, that's probably reason I had to figure out. This kind of represents um, twin power. Um, these were two watermelons that I took a picture of back in 2006, I do believe. But my name represents my personality. And that kind of coincides with a lot of um, the work I do now um, and also who I am in the sense that a lot of years I kind of forgot, I guess, that um, my meaning, my, my um, personality, uh, and also sort of, I guess, my MO or mantra, because I think that when people invoke a certain name, um, it carries out to the universe, um, but then because the universe is always constantly expanding, it too constantly goes on forever and forever. And so I try to be conscious, I guess more so now than I was then, of things I put out to be verse um, through um, speaking. Because I do know that that basically will always you know, um, be, just as we always will be, um, we saw our you know, spirits, our souls. And that ties, like I said, to, I guess, um, my uh, past in the sense that. I lost my creativity for a lot of years. Um, I quit being creative. Um, Based on kind of my I guess middle school, but there to do art, you know, in elementary middle school. I was really good at it. I wanted to be a support time art teacher. Um, that's what kind of my thoughts and whatnot. But then I kind of started thinking more so about, I guess, about high school. I'm going to become an engineer. So I started my first freshman year taking an engineering drafting class with my friend brother, Aruka, and you know, I kind of was more or less. Focus on basically math and science. And though this art is part of math and science, though, um, and vice versa, I kind of stopped doing my creative things for different reasons and kind of that kind of be in my past. And then, lo and behold, 1998, I was, um, I became a father, and my daughter started at an early age, you know, wanting to be able to draw and um, sketch and do other things too. One day I was. Um, Curse her to do was always to every time she made something, I always put her um, her name on it. I also took the data too, and something that you know I didn't really do on myself. But as you can see, from my, my pieces right here, um, I never kind of took my own advice. But I was mentioning my daughter there, whatever she did. And then um, I guess I, I was by curse I guess through her some way. So before I worked, uh, I was cursed her to do her art. Um, and she really got it too. She uh, did design at her school in middle school, and she did the uh, basically the band um, logo, she was using instruments though in the band for FTMS. And but I kind of I guess pushed myself aside and really just I think mean, part of it too is that I was just going through a lot of different things, um, mainly because my um, um, just the. the Basically, I, I call the bad ugly in my past, and so I lost my creativity. And then, as I started trying to resurrect basically my spirituality, and therefore my creativity, I had to start trying to become, you know, I guess more of who I what I used to be, and that's Obi Or, you know, good will to family and friends. So a lot of my pieces though kind of evoked out there in different ways. And I think also too, what I kind of include in the family is what <coughs> Albert Einstein called, um, what did he say? He talked about showing compassion and love to all living creatures. 
and that works through the, the plants, the flora, I mean the, the flora size plants and the fauna and every micro microorganism known stuff that we can't see, don't see, it can't see. With that being the case though, a lot of my um, photographs usually are nature inspired. I think sometimes we kind of take nature for granted. And that's because part of I guess what I did for the show that I have at the Gallery of Maine is that a lot of my pieces though, either through the title itself or even just through just the photographs, are kind of, you know, I guess dealing with the struggle basically of man versus nature. Even though nature is part of us and we part of it, for some reason or another, we humans have kind of got to the point that we kind of think we are separate from it. And I think that has been probably more problematic though, I don't in the, in the West, in the United States, as we start having you know, these serious um, natural disasters, among other things, probably because of things that we have done, haven't done. I was a part of it too, it's tied to agriculture. And this right here is a photograph from Greenville, Kentucky. This is um, from 2013, I do believe. My twin brother and I are working on um, two acres there on an 800 acre family farm doing a mixture of things. And part of it is, we started out trying to do was a forest gardening. And basically, that's kind of mimicking the forest inside of um, basically agriculture, essentially. It's part of permaculture. And but because the soil there, you can't really see it here in this photograph, is pretty much um, primarily clay and then just a lot of um, bare land. It's not really suitable for most part for the growing anything outside things that can tolerate and do thrive in poor or clay soil. And so that has kind of changed though, kind of as far as what we're working on there. But this is then this is tied to basically agriculture too in the sense that, or even just um, lack of agriculture in this, because um, most time animals are not really hard anymore. That's part of what I think the initiative was, as well as too, agriculture in the beginning though was um, always use around, there's always trees around though, basically, because the trees for the animals, we have shade that, like a hot outside, among other things. And of course, the shade that the trees help to shade out the plants too in the hot sun, that way you have to water as much either. And I think a lot of times though, um, the things we have done though, are you know, kind of come to humble roost up, essentially though. Um, And when I started doing photography, I started at age around 10 or so. I got a 110 camera for either my father or for my mother, for my birthday, or my twin brother. I took um, photographs then, um, I have a few, but I bring those with, <coughs> with me. I do recall one that I did take um, in those early days. It was at Miguel's Pizza down there, Red River Gorge, that's Natural Bridge State Park. Um, that kind of stuck with me for a lot of years because one, right next to that there was um, a field that which had goats growing, I said goats growing, growing, growing <laughs> goats grazing at. Um, also, I do believe it's a type of um, either cows or bison, I can't recall. And that was, to me, I mean, being you know, that age though and stuff, that was kind of cool to kind of see, you know, that there. I went there again to that area, I guess it was three years ago. Um, the guy's still there, but that pastor is no longer here for some reason or another. Um, and then when I started taking pictures again later on, it was kind of from my business, e consulting. We got started in 2006. This is um, one of the, I guess, logos I've done for the business over the last years. And that um, business venture, my brother and I, we've done different things. And one that was trying to, I guess, talk about. Um, foraging and basically talk about you know, different wild plants that are medicinal or edible. This right here is called Never Leaf um, Plantain. This is one photograph I took. This right here shows kind of uh, one photograph of one of my gardens, so one of my early gardens. And when I first started gardening, so like when I did photography in some ways, I kind of really didn't, I guess, have a um, have a um, I don't want to say sorry, advisor, but have, I guess like a teacher in some ways, and so I kind of kind of start doing it on my own and just try to think about things, you know, how I would think it, it should be done. And this right here I kind of call five gardens in one. And basically I actually have 
five different gardens, a bark top, five tobacco sticks, and one on one bed. Kind of showed that you can grow things together. And this is something I created in 2014. Um, when I started really trying to, I guess, be more proactive and being creative. This is a collage I did down at at, at Special Media in Lexington, Kentucky. They had basically uh, all month long in art in April, different ways to be, be creative. I knew consciously I needed to and wanted to be creative again. And my daughter was going to go with me, but she had something else to do that day, um, particular driving. This is what I did that stuff myself. And as a process, trying to help me to heal and to, I guess, become, become the photographer you kind of see today. The ice pieces here, I took, um, they see on this table, I took while I was living in Columbus. I moved to Columbus in 2012, the same year my father moved down here to Richmond. I was like, we could part ourselves. It's kind of funny about that. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and so when I was there, I spent a lot of time at a place called Briggs Reservoir. And then it's off the Chiota River, which is off of US 33, a river, Riverview Road. And there is probably the whole, I guess, nature reserve, if you want to call it there. There's about 30 acres of their house. Uh, not, not more, I'm not sure exactly the, the size of it. And there you see quite a few different wildlife there. The some of the I had here are some of the ducks that I took on there um, my first year there. And some of the ones out there in the spray case I took this year at Grace Reservoir. You see um, some herons there, as well as two on the cover of my postcard. This duck right here. Um, that kind of called um, all, all Eyes on Me. This is a duck that I saw there that was somewhat you know, by itself. You could kind of see, you know, back there there's some other ducks still kind of behind it, all kind of foraging, you know, looking for food. This was, I think, early in the morning or so. I said this was February also, so it was still kind of a cold day. Um, it was still kind of somewhat warm winter day. And that duck right there is kind of one of the other ducks that you kind of see. There are also two, I saw seagulls there. I photographed it up, not here, and this is it, at the um, display case. And then also, while I was in Columbus, I took this photograph right here. And this for her kind of modeled after, um, in some ways, it's kind of one of my, I guess, um, um, teachers from photography, my father, who has a, used to have a dark room um, while I was growing up. And I know he liked to take pictures of um, the sun kind of um, shining through trees. And I kind of thought, I kind of modeled this picture. He said the pictures I took to, after that there. And so one afternoon after work, I went to a grocery reservoir, and I decided to try to capture light shining through trees. I have this right here, and I do believe. So it's where she has the sun shining on the the Seattle River rather than as shining through trees. And that was something that I had to a few quick photographs of while I was there in Columbus. Um, just again trying to I guess I guess be more focused of my photography as well. I want to take a photograph of. And this right here, the photograph didn't come out right, but come off this stuff after um, a photograph I'd seen many years ago, basically, it was kind of the same time of year, fall. You had the trees, though, with the leaves change color, but more importantly, in the, very in the background, how people kind of playing though, out in the park. And this photograph here had a, basically, I take pictures of the um, trees, and then somehow, some way, either, I can't remember if it's intentional or not, but basically, there's people in the background, probably about another. Um, 30 feet or so away, though, that kind of got caught in the picture. And they were playing um, in nature, which I think, though, that, um, was very important to do. And then also, 
this book, this um, photograph right here, I took um, same time I had the these my raised beds. This was a of a butterfly um, that was um, landed on some clover and I do believe some other grasses. And this right here photograph I like so much though because I think butterflies represent transformation. At a time period, that's what I was doing too, was transforming like a butterfly. And so this kind of became my, um, I guess my photograph that I kind of thought represented me some ways was to what I was going through. And to the point that I liked it so much that I decided to use this for the cover of my book that I published in 2000 and, uh, 2013. And this book I completed while I was in Columbus. I started the book in 2008. And I kind of had, you know, put it down for some years. I resurrected, with, resurrected it while I was there. In fact, a friend of mine told me that in 2009, when she read um, part of the, um, the rough chapter of it, that I need to publish it and get, get it out there. And then while I was at Columbus, I started to go ahead and do more things for myself. And this one thing I decided to go ahead and do, though. I worked um, full time. While this right here is what I still had. Um, uh, what the public business I was doing, but I still decided to go ahead and get published. Creativity, um, well, visual art, let's just say, I was being creative with food that I created. And when I started kind of growing food, 2002, thereabouts, up to probably about 2006, or 2006, I really started becoming, I guess, more conscious of the food that I was, uh, I was putting in my body and trying to be more conscious too of um, the flavors and the food that I, um, I prepare. And I started doing a lot of different color foods, though. I've been kind of known for my family for probably about six years or so, uh, basically creating really colorful, beautiful salads. This is a salad that I created in Boston, Columbus. I want to share with a friend of mine. Um, and uh, this is a couple of years. I wish you could do this for the camera. This right here. And then I came back from um, Columbus in 2013. I went to McCollum Springs, took this photograph right here that I call Reflections. I kind of think that um, this is kind of fitting in some ways because when I started, I guess, transforming too, um, personally, I kept on thinking about The Man in the Mirror um, by Michael Jackson. And I think about that, you know, I wanted to be able to look at the mirror like the reflection I saw looking back at me. And I think this word, I mean, helps keep me perspective though, in a sense that choices that I make, uh, I want them to be something that would benefit other people, as well as to, to try to do something good. Um, my mother, she's not here yet, but she's always said to us though, growing up that our people become, the people who become today though and stuff, are based on choices that we make in the past. And she always tells us to be conscious of the choices that you make because that will affect your future. And so you want to become successful in your future, make choices that allow you to become successful. And this photograph right here too was taken at uh, Martin Akers in Greenville, Kentucky. This is of a hawk that I took a picture of. The same year we started, my brother and I started doing the um, forest garden there. Oh, you got to where the hawk is because oh. you really get the camouflage thing. Oh, it's right here. And. Uh, In 2013, I had my book signing while I was in Columbus, my first book signing at my, my workplace to check out. And while there, I decided to kind of turn the book signing to something a little bit more. 
I had three photographs that were there with me. One of a butterfly, another one of a, some kind of thing that picture right there. Um, and then the third one I can't right now. I see photographs. I gave it through my um, friends slash ex co-workers before I left um, Clemson, moved back to Lexington. And part of the right there was that I decided to, when I first brought the book out, so I also took go ahead publicly, you know, I guess, to say, hey, you know, I do do photography, and I think I'm okay at it. And, you know, tell me what people, tell me what you think. And people really love my photographs, and I kind of decided to, after that, try to go ahead and be, I guess, more conscious of it, come back to Lexington and do more with it. So that same year I came back, moved, was next year, 2014, I had to organize a uh, book signing at the Lurk Theater in Lexington. My father's a part of it, my mother, my twin brother, as well as my cousin Bessie. And, uh, and, I, and I, part of the um, exhibit that we had there, I had these photographs right here, the smaller ones, I had about, I think all together, 27 at their house that were on the wall in the um, Lyric Theater. And then it took, I guess, about three years or so after that there, for me to start trying to, I guess, be an actual professional gallery. And I had the opportunity last year um, to be in Gallery of Maine's 16th annual Shape by Water Show. And had two pieces there. And then since then, I have um, really, really, I guess, become a lot more knowledgeable about photography, as well as um, being professional and um, my displaying of my, photo my photographs, as well as just trying to um, really capture the moment that I'm going to capture, as well as to just trying to, um, and just, just trying to hone in on my, my, my skills as well. And some of the pieces that I've taken recently are out there right now. I have eight pieces in the display case and then three on the columns. The first one on the column is the one in front of the catalog on the computer. Other two are going towards the um, front door. And I got rid of main right now I have 27 pieces all together and then four of them are kind of doubled a uh, couple together and two of them right here. But these um, photographs right here, I know that earlier today um, Charlie asked me, we said in South Africa, no these are her or not. This right here and this I was taken in Taos, New Mexico, 2013, while I was there for a conference um, for Growing Food Justice for All Initiative. And these right here, I do believe, are the same mountain. This right here was taken at the hotel I stayed at. This was taken at, well, I went to go to um, get a massage and go to the resort. Um, it was taken at the mountains right there. Yeah. It wasn't until this January that she flew, um, um, bought my first professional camera. I bought a DSLR in January, right there. Had my 110, they had 35 millimeter disposable cameras for about, off and on, for about six, seven years. I've got about two different 35 millimeter digital cameras. And then I decided to go ahead, I knew I wanted to become, I guess, more professional photographer and try to turn this eventually to, you know, a part of my ever growing um, consulting business. I decided to spend the money and do something more professional. I would say, um, ask for questions, but I'm still trying to, trying to I guess, wait on um, some of the later arrivals. I know the weather's out there is bad. Um, and I had more things I wanted to say, but. I think most of the people already kind of know me, so it's kind of hard yeah. to. Yes. <coughs> what kind of farming is near your farm? Oh, it's definitely is non what I call non biological on farming. On our farm, there's a farmer who lives, who lives down the road on the farm, maybe less than a quarter mile away, who has a farm that does um, the three big ones: corn, soybeans. And then we alternates um, every other year. And I know I'm farm too on stuff that I do spray. My uncle, was, my brother and I were there last weekend, and he told us the 
I guess learn how to inserted that, that that's great. That's where it's great that I'm sure. Then know that also to there are co-op farms up under that have just um, cows like raising. I'm not sure that growing it now on the farm and what kind of berries. But just this Kentucky and. Um, I think in a lot of ways people have not, I guess, evolved the farming techniques or so much that devolved, I think, with the rise of um, basically slave labor for different reasons. They grew the plantations, and so therefore they quit doing things that were not mechanized, for one. They started using chemicals, which came about through um, World War I. They ended up there when they had a, um, oil to create the chemicals they needed. Um, and then they have the market to the farmers, and also too, when they, when the college universities start telling the farmers what to do, rather than the farmers telling the universities though and stuff, it's how it should be done because we know because we do this for every single day. So it's how we make a living. Um, but. Yes. My daughter, uh, that's why I brought her here. She loves to paint and draw and. She's really into the art stuff. Okay. So that's why I went to pick, get her and bring her back in here. Is there anything you'd like to share with her or to okay. encourage her yes. to do different? Because she's not into sports. She's not into cheering or nothing like that. So she really finds her satisfaction in painting and drawing. So okay. that's why we, I really got her to bring her right back to see if you had anything to say to her. Well, I'll tell, I'll tell you what I told my daughter um, years ago. She started drawing, um, I guess about age two or three. I tell her, I always do this right here. Anytime you create something, I always put initials on there and the date. And then two, feel free to just be able to be yourself. Don't feel like you need to look at a book, though, and try to practice what they do. Be your own self. One thing I did back then, my own art, though, is that I didn't even have a teacher per se. I kind of basically you got know, people I saw in my life though, and you kind of barked them down and kind of created my own style, my own kind of way looking at the, looking at what I wanted to do. Then also just feel free to always be and stay creative though. For a lot of years I lost my creativity and um, I kind of kind of pushed that to the side and I kind of realized as I got an, came an adult, I was part of who I really am. And so you being creative today, though, I always keep your creativity alive. But when you get to high school and to college, you kind of feel that you can't be creative anymore because they kind of want basically to kind of become a, um, a robot. Everybody has to say to do the same exact same things. That's not how it really is, though, in real life. So I be, never be afraid to be yourself and to be unique. Well, go tell her about if she doesn't know about the gallery on Main. Okay. And about going there to see. Some of the art that is there, and maybe mentioned her as well about the possibility of her being a member of Gallery on Main and having some of her art on display. The Gallery on Main is down in the Community Trust Bank building. It's around about 17 years now or so. And the gallery is open from Monday to Friday, 8 30 to about 4, uh, Fridays to 5 p.m. And for membership, student membership is, I believe, $15 or thereabouts. And we did have in our April show, we had a, a young lady who was seven years old who did two photographs, but that was in the show. And if I could be a member out there, just let us know, get you a membership. Yeah. And if I could be out there to see, see your work to try to support you know, young, older, young artists to be able to be, um, have their work displayed as well as to, to keep on having that reinforcement, positive reinforcement though, that way you can keep on doing your thing and hopefully one day you become famous and just let people know where you're from yeah. and be proud of yourself. I tried to get her to play basketball and she did not like it. She's just, she's amazing in drawing and stuff. And I was like, where did she get this from? <laughs> so I thought this was really cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Sitting here, you're sitting here with some of the, the gurus of Gallery of Maine. Uh, tell her about the art show we had several shows back with the young people had a whole wall. Oh, and, and, we have that coming up. And the winner, tell us about the winner. She and, won and something and, uh, for, for EKU. She won 
first place and what was it? Uh, for making this one landscape with um, leftover paper and tissue paper. Yeah, so she awesome. wanted to make a collage out of different materials. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Well, the gallery has, uh, we have a student show coming up in November and it's a high school show but we can have a special law just for our student members. So if you're interested, um, the first Tuesday of November, we will all be there hanging our show. And if you have something you would like to put in there, you will find a special place for it. And you will get to meet, and then the next week we have a reception. And um, that's where all of the artists come and all the people in the community come, and this will be a big one because we will have all the high school students and their, their parents as well. And you'll get to meet other people and maybe ask, you might see someone has created a painting that you, you might love and you might be able to talk to that artist and ask them how they did it. And you might see a photograph and they'll say, how did you do that? So it's, it's a great opportunity to talk about your work, but also meet other people doing wonderful things. So we can get information and try to figure out how to get you into these programs. Yes. So you can do what you want to do. And what's your name? Jekaya. Jekaya. Okay. I'm Obi Ora. Nice to meet you. And on Friday night is the night that the bank stays open until five. So, I mean, they're open shortly after school, but it depends on how quickly you get off. Okay. Uh, and this is Lexington? Or no, it's here. Oh, it's right there. across from the courthouse. It's in the Community Trust Bank building. Cool. That's pretty cool, Jekaiah. Yeah. Okay, we've been trying to figure out something that she liked to do. And she's been doing all this drawing and painting and stuff like that. And so, I think it's time to get her into something. And there are other workshops that we can help you connect with, too. Be fine. Yeah, she could be the one standing in front at the library for a month. Wouldn't that be fun? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Oh, you're welcome. We're going to go on the other side. Thank you, Mom. Thank, Thank you. you guys. <laughs> Come on, you guys. You should do it. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Have a good day. We're going to be watching out for, for that name. Yeah. you might want to uh, pursue either in the, as another book or as um, a show. Both. Wow. <laughs> um, that could be both. My brother and I, we have done workshops um, as well as to like different events, have tables at them. And one of the workshops, one of the handouts I, I created for us like maybe 10 years or so ago, was basically about becoming healthier use by college. It sat on their resources of different types, um, the people who kind of basically um, look at their health, the job become a healthier person. Some sort of videos, films, books, magazines, as well as the recipes. And one class too as well. Um, and that definitely is uh, something that I try to do my business too, help you a living mentor. <coughs> I definitely wouldn't have a problem on filming on um, my show, not talking, you know. Uh, somebody that there may be called come and, come and help you or you, and have you know, different pieces though, uh, that kind of help to people come, come that way. Whereas through, you know, um, in actual nature, food, or even just through, um, just, just um, definitely different ways of doing it, I think, though. So that's a possibility. And as far as the book goes, uh, 
do have two poetry books that I did write. I came back to Columbus. That in some ways about that there in the sense that they are introspective books uh, in which I basically kind of um, deal with the past to prepare for the future. And that is part of building, but I mean it's part of two coming coming up to you, which is how to also to rise above as well as two to the EKU psychology department with their suicide prevention. I think a lot of that has to do too with I guess trying to deal with your own, you know, ang angst or hurt and, and trying to not, I guess, let the things from the past overcome you. So that way you can become you know, healthier you and not kind of think that, you know, it is then all uh, to be all. Uh, I kind of realized, I guess, over the years that no matter how bad things get, you know, it's always a hard day. I tell people that, you know, also that there's always you know, going to be um, um, a little rain, um, what do I call it? A little rain on your parade, though, but the sun comes out tomorrow. And tomorrow may not always mean literally the next day, but it could be tomorrow in the future. And so I tell, tell people, you know, that sometimes we got to know this, to fight and um, hold on for what, you know, may come. And this experience I've had, um, this the last um, five years or so, I definitely had got myself, I guess, um, kind of um, down and out. And I decided to try to rise above and to try to keep my whole night. I knew that tomorrow would be a better day. Um, well, one of the things that um, people have noticed, um, some of the comments I've overheard, uh, they look at your photographs and then they start seeing things in the photographs because, um, you know, like, like the, the hawk you had here, it's like you have a beautiful photograph, but the hawk is, is there and you don't really yeah. see it until you see it. And you have one of the heron at the gallery oh, yeah. that is like, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, I love the heron. And I'm like, what? And you, and you have to look again and see that, <laughs> see that. That's true. That's very true. Do you remember what time of day that one was taken? Which one? In the middle. That was taken, I want to say, late afternoon. And it was taken in the fall also. So it's been um, probably late afternoon before um, sunset. Yeah. How about that? I like it both. They definitely can't work both ways. I do not agree with that. And that too, I guess, is kind of hard perspective though. Everybody look at the same piece, see something different. I think that's kind of what I think artists kind of bring, I guess, to life though, is that, you know, we may have an intention or thought when we create you know, a piece, where it's through painting, through drawing, through sketching, or maybe, but then the end user, the, um, uh, your audience, Makes it something completely different that you never thought about when you're making a piece or when you're taking a photograph of the piece. Uh, I think that's kind of like the beauty of, uh, um, of, of, of art. And also, to, uh, doing art for art's sake in the sense that it can reach such a broader, broader audience, though, that may not even be reached, though, to books or means of, um, of um, visual displays. And I think, too, that, um, like, um, James Baldwin said, you know, art is meant to disturb the peace. And that was kind of, I guess, my theme in some ways, though, with um, Rise Above the Show. I want to try to find pieces that, you know, will kind of, you know, shake up, I guess, not necessarily how it's called, but shake up, I guess, how, things, how people perceive the world or perceive the world, the world around them. And that, I think, mean, in some ways, too, you know, is um, apparently some of these pieces I have here today as well. Just connecting people with nature is like shaking up the universe. That's true. That's very true. That's very true. And sadly, that's you no. Know, it's a kind of a of a current phenomenon. You know, more so than um, other things. But a lot of that just has to do with how we've um, created our society and how we kind of, I guess, you know, have shown things that you know, are natural and real in favor of things that are synthetic or fake. And yet, um, it's sad to have.
Yes. Who is that? James Baldwin. James Baldwin. James Baldwin. Let me, um, let me just say that right. Yeah, art, but here to disturb the peace. That's what James Baldwin has said. Art is to. Artists are here to disturb the peace. Artists are here. To disturb the peace. Okay, thank you. Are oh, you welcome? Well, it seems like you're making connections with uh, nature, the natural world, the your your the the food that you're eating. In your art, it's it's like you're seeing that like you're making connections with all of those things. That's true. That's very true. I realize that as an engineer, everything's connected. Even though we're not taught in our schools, that everything's connected. And so I, this part being being who I am, though, being probably because of my, my father and my mother, I kind of recognize the, the connection between things. I try to pick the dots though any way I can. And sometimes I do it though in subtle ways so that what people don't sure see that they're being taught a lesson or learn from something because oftentimes the people hate, you know, um, learning lesson because it's too much like school. Nobody wants to learn anymore because it's not fun. Even though I kinda of feel that learning though is like on process that humans have to do to survive and grow super evolving. And so, because like, learning is that way, learning should always be done, though. Um, I think, too, though, if, they, if you don't change, you don't learn, and then you kind of don't grow, and therefore, what else is the alternative? You die. Mm -hmm. And for you decay, how can I put it, the same difference. And I think it's part of, you know, of growing and evolving. It's always constantly be changing and rethinking, basically, what you thought in the past. And so, the, to my pieces today, I may have got, you know, another five years or so, and be like, you know, man, that's horrible, you know. Or maybe that's not really the attention I want to have for it, or the idea of thought of, you know, I wanted to have people convey by my talk about my pieces. And so, I think that, that may, um, that's the right For those who missed it, this is a piece that I had um, shown earlier of a salad that I made while I was in Living Columbus. And I showed, um, I did a picture initially to show a friend of mine who lived in Columbus too. Um, of what she was missing, um, and I just talked about how I like to make creative and beautiful salads so that um, the last six years, six years or so that my family has kind of started to you know, know me for, my brother. And part of that is to become, you know, help your youth, as well as to just being more conscious of what people put into their bodies or on their bodies. Our bodies are our temples. Our bodies are our temples. So therefore, you should want to protect and nurture and love your temple the best way you can. Because it, along with the rest of the known and unknown universe, was created by our power. And so that's what people do feel then, therefore, you should want to be able to take care of it and nurture it. So how did you uh, come up with the idea to use a salad as an art form? That came, I guess, that same time period that I started growing food. Uh -huh. I wasn't really being creative, I guess, no, through visual art, per se. And so I kind of did it through basically my gardening as supposed to my actual food I prepare for other people. I had a girlfriend at a time period that I used to make a lot of food for her and her children. She ever did a lot of cooking and I tried to get, get her to eat more healthier. And part of what I did though was try to make sure to have food that tasted good and always looked good too. So that way she may be encouraged more to eat the food that she normally wouldn't eat. Um, one thing I did for my garden also, well, I did a community garden for a place next to the college, that to arts community. It's a place that helps people with, who with adopt have disabilities. I did the first garden plot. I did the, letter, the initials LA. The, the initials uh, fully are LAC. 
I did the initials using corn. So basically, I had the L and the A all done using corn. And when he kind of started to grow, and he asked me the one day, you know, what the LA was for? He thought the LA on Raiders. I was like, no, for you. No, I was like, what? It's like, yeah. I said, like, I saw corn of it. But I try to show you that you can still be creative though and growing food. And also to have the kind of evoke a different meaning to also to as well as to describe something different. And I did that just growing um, a whole bunch of corn that I bought. Um, I, mean, I said corn, I mean carrots. I'm sorry, carrots that I bought. And even though I wasn't necessarily being creative, I was doing it different means. Twenty-seven pieces right now at the gallery I'm in, and five of them are from Martin Akers. Um, this first one's Martin Akers too, um, as well as this one too. But thank you all.